Okay, well, hmm. Now we'll take a closer look at a molecular dynamics simulation. This physics-based simulation was created for 100 nanoseconds for the hematopoietic progenitor kinase 1 protein crystal structure from the PDB. Okay, okay, so here we go, Min says. So I'm sitting here with my coffee, practically buzzing with excitement. You ask me why I'm so hyped. I lean in and say, I just watched a 4K molecular dynamics simulation of a protein called HPK1 in action. You give me a puzzled look, understandably. It sounds like sci-fi, right? Basically, I watched a high-definition molecular movie of HPK1 and its inhibitor dancing together. Hmm, how do I explain this in a way that makes sense? Okay, imagine this. It's like I had a tiny high-speed camera that could film molecules dancing and interacting in ultra-slow motion. Intrigued? Great. Let me break it down, and I promise I'll keep it as if we're just chatting over coffee, not in a stuffy lecture hall. So what on earth is a molecular dynamics simulation? Let's think about that for a second. Imagine those flipbook animations you might have made as a kid drawing a stick figure in slightly different poses on each page and flipping through to see it move. MD simulation is like that, but instead of drawing the frames, a computer calculates them using physics. We take a bunch of atoms, our protein plus a small drug molecule, in a virtual box of water, since in our cells they're surrounded by water, and then hit play on physics. The computer figures out how each atom pushes or pulls on its neighbors, like tiny balls connected by springs, and moves them step by step. Do this millions of times, and voila, you get a molecular movie of how everything jiggles and wiggles over time. Pretty wild, right? And when I say 4K, I mean we watched it in extremely high detail, ultra high definition for the molecular world. Now before I get lost in the coolness of the simulation itself, let me introduce the stars of the show, a protein called HPK1 and a small molecule that inhibits it a potential drug. HPK1 stands for hematopoietic progenitor kinase 1. No wonder we abbreviate it. So what's the deal with HPK1? Think of it like an internal brake pedal in immune cells. Specifically, HPK1 acts in T cells, the soldiers of the immune system. When a T cell recognizes a threat, say a cancer cell, HPK1 sends a slowdown signal. It's the cell's way of saying, whoa there, not so fast. Normally, that's good. You don't want your immune system overreacting to everything. But in the context of cancer, you actually do want your T cells to unleash full force on the tumor. This is where immuno-oncology comes in, which is basically the field of fighting cancer by empowering the immune system. You might have heard of checkpoint inhibitor drugs like those that block PD-1, they're famous for releasing the brakes and letting T cells attack cancer more aggressively. HPK1 isn't as famous, but it's a similar concept, operating inside the cell rather than on its surface. In fact, HPK1 has been identified as a negative regulator of T cell activation, meaning it's one of the molecules that tells the immune cell to cool off. So scientists figure, if we inhibit HPK1 with a drug, basically put HPK1 itself on pause, we might unleash the T cells just like those other immunotherapies do, possibly even boosting their cancer-fighting power. This is a BIG deal in immuno-oncology. It's like discovering a new secret lever we can pull to turbocharge the immune system against cancer. Of course, whenever you have a new lever like that, you have to be careful. If our HPK1 inhibitor drug isn't precise enough, it might hit other similar proteins by accident. HPK1 is a kinase, a type of enzyme, and there are lots of kinases in immune cells, many of which we don't want to block. A sloppy inhibitor could gum up the works of some other kinase and defeat the whole point by dulling the immune response. So there's a huge emphasis on making these inhibitors selective. Think of it like crafting a key that fits only the lock you want, HPK1, and not any others. Keep that key analogy in mind, because it fits perfectly with what I'm going to tell you about the simulation. All right, so back to our molecular movie. We have HPK1, the protein, and this inhibitor, our potential cancer-fighting key, together in a simulation. We set up the simulation using an actual 3D snapshot scientist had captured of HPK1 with an inhibitor bound, 
Protein Data Bank, entry 9H8D, for the curious. That snapshot was like a freeze frame of our two dancers mid-pose, so we said, all right, let's see the move. So what did we see in this molecular dance? For one, HPK1 isn't a rigid statue at all. It's slightly springy. At body temperature, parts of the protein flex and breathe. A loop near the drug's binding site wiggles a bit, like the protein is alive and adjusting itself. A static crystal structure couldn't show this motion, but our simulation lets us watch the full performance. Meanwhile, the inhibitor stays snug in HPK1's pocket. It's like a little boat safely docked in a harbor, riding gentle waves. It might rock slightly, but it doesn't drift away. A great sign for a strong binder. We noticed a few key anchors holding it there. One was a hydrogen bond, basically a tiny chemical handshake between the drug and a part of the protein. That handshake stayed solid throughout the simulation, telling us it's a crucial grip. Around it, water-fearing, hydrophobic parts of the protein were hugging the hydrophobic parts of the drug. Think of it as the classic oil and water scenario. The oily parts of the protein and the oily parts of the drug glom onto each other to avoid water, which helps lock the drug in place. Now, it wasn't all perfectly locked down. It was dynamic. At times, the drug almost made an extra hydrogen bond with another spot on the protein, a particular part of the protein's pocket, but it never quite held on. It was like reaching for a handrail and just missing it. Interesting, right? It makes you wonder, if we tweak the drug just a bit, could it grab that handrail firmly? We even saw water molecules occasionally try to sneak into the protein drug interface and then get pushed out. That suggests the fit is pretty snug, since water couldn't easily slip in and stay. All these little observations give us a map of what's strong and what's not in the interaction. So how do we use this knowledge to design better drugs? This is where it gets exciting. Remember that almost bond the drug wanted to make? We can use that info. Maybe we modify the drug to add a tiny chemical hook that reaches into that spot on the protein and locks in. If we do that, the drug would stick even better. What if we could design drugs that perfectly fit their targets? Hmm, that's the dream, right? Medicines that latch onto the intended protein and nothing else, like a lock and key that match exactly. Molecular dynamic simulations like this help bring that dream closer to reality. Instead of just trial and error in the lab, we can test ideas on the computer. We can see, before synthesizing anything, whether a proposed tweak might make the drug bind tighter or more selectively. It's part of a modern approach called structure-based drug design, using the protein's 3D structure and even its motions to guide how we shape our drug. It's a bit like peeking inside the lock and then crafting the key, rather than guessing blindly. In our HPK1 story, these insights are incredibly valuable. They tell us which interactions to keep and which ones we might improve. And importantly, they highlight unique features of HPK1's pocket that we can target. That helps ensure our inhibitor is specific to HPK1 and doesn't hit other similar proteins, crucial for avoiding side effects. Early experiments with HPK1 inhibitors are promising too. Researchers have seen enhanced T-cell activity and even tumor shrinkage in mice when HPK1 is blocked. That kind of result tells us we're on the right track and gives a real sense of hope for this approach. Now, stepping back as we finish our coffee, let's appreciate how far we've come in science. We just watched an ultra-detailed molecular dance and learned how to fine-tune it. Not long ago, the idea of seeing atoms move and using that to design a cancer drug would have been pure science fiction. But here we are, doing exactly that. And it's not just about this one protein. This is a glimpse of the future of medicine. Today, we're looking at HPK1, Tomorrow, it could be another crucial protein, or an entire molecular machine, with simulations guiding the way to new treatments. Tiny molecular dances turned into life-saving therapies. That's the beauty of modern science. Pretty cool, right? Now, who's ready for a refill on that coffee?